Hey everyone, Darlinian here, welcome back to my dungeon. Today, we're gonna do something completely different. This is for another adventure in the Candlekeep Mysteries book. This is page 35, the Book of the Raven, for third level adventure specifically. So you do need a handful of other miniatures for this, and I'm showing you here on screen all of them that you would need, and today we're actually gonna be painting two gargoyles. You actually only need one package, thankfully. I was able to get these at Power Up Gaming, located in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, for $7.50 Canadian. As you can see here, this is the front of the box with the two different gargoyles. On the back, this is what I was expecting. The detail, obviously, in the miniatures, but the color being one solid stone color. So this could be the easiest miniature we're painting ever. And let's open it up. This does seem to have the two black discs. From what I'm hearing, the new miniatures don't include any bases, which really sucks. Oh man, I love that. Always do. Seriously, never disappointed by the detail on these Nulzer miniatures. These are two medium creatures. They're not small. From what I read in the monster manual, they're five to seven feet, up to 300 pounds. Awesome, man. And again, in this video, we will be using the latest paint set, the D&D Prismatic Paint cases. One of them is the basic starter case and the other the intermediate case. You don't have to get both cases. You can actually just buy these individual paints that we're using today for like three or four bucks individually if you want to do that. It's just that in these cases you do get a paintbrush included with each one. So the basic comes with the brush round number one, multi-purpose. In the intermediate case it comes with the fine detail number three slash zero. We just don't have a dry brush in these two cases, so I kind of wish they did that. If you end up getting the Army Painter Starter Brush Set, the Nulzer one, it does come with the three basic brushes you need, which is the base coat, the detail, and the dry brush. And of course, I say this every video, I do recommend using a gray primer diluting it with water, but I've been using the Army Painter Brush On Primer. It's like four or five bucks. You get a large bottle just to speak to this when you're seeing this beside one of the Prismatic Paint Bottles. It, it'll last you a while, especially when you're diluting it. Again, the paint tacks on a little better, even though they say primed and ready to go. You know, I just feel like I get a better result. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Another thing you'll need is a plate, a palette. I'm using a sushi dish here, and you will need a bowl of water, which I'm getting right now. Boom. See, now I've got my water ready to go. And I say this every time just to get you guys, you know, programmed here with how to do this. Open the bottle. Don't shake it. Get rid of what's on top. And then I'm going to close the bottle and give it a vigorous shake. And because I was just painting yesterday, this should be pretty good. Like, good to go after this. Yeah, that looks good immediately. And again, before we begin, I have to promote this awesome paint handle. It's called the Citadel Color Paint Handle. And this is about 10 bucks, I want to say, maybe 12 bucks. Just to show you here, these open up with two springs and you can fit a regular miniature or a large miniature in here. If your base is glued onto it, that's what those black discs are for, or if you get a clear one. I don't think he'll fit. See the base here? Most of them do. Truly, I can't even have that go around. That's crazy, so I can't use that today. But I do promote you guys getting this. You know, I can see way more when my fingers aren't holding the base of the miniature, covering all the feet in detail. So to prime the miniature, we're just going to use the multi-purpose brush. And if you have any other starter set, it would be the base coat. Wet your brush. And for this, the primer, you do want to keep that water on your brush and then swirl it into your gray primer. We're going to dilute that. Again, we just want a thin, thin coat covering the surface. When you start painting, try and paint from one spot and outwards, constantly trying to smear it as far out, you know, stretch it out, get rid of it from that central spot that you started. That way you're retaining the detail and make sure not to coat the eyes to the point that you don't see any holes even behind the horns here very easy to miss that priming that still spreading though see what i mean gonna wet the brush keeping it wet not worrying about getting rid of the water and then dabbing it back into that primer diluting it again starting in one spot and trying to take away from that area spreading it away from there make sure to get on top here and little hooks very easy to miss we get in there on the base Okay, I'm gonna let that one dry. I'm wetting the brush. Going back into that primer. Super diluted. Wherever I start, just take from that and go away from it. I go back to the wing to get that paint onto the brush and then spread it over here to a dry spot. That's all we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Wet that brush. Make sure you don't let that gray primer or paint dry on your brush. And then you can use a rag, shirt, whatever it is you want and just kind of squeeze the water out a bit. Lay it down on your tray and then let them dry. Look at that detail. Oh, that's awesome. We're going to be using Stonewall Gray. Again, just open the bottle. Don't shake it. 
release any liquid and it should look runny it is it's just kind of running out without me squeezing it a little bit then you close the bottle then give it a bigger shake then test it out again it's just kind of oozing out a bit and shake it again i think that's good we're gonna continue to use the multi-purpose brush wetting it then kind of press the brush gently against the side of the bowl to push the excess water off because we're not trying to dilute this and then dab your brush into the paint starting at the wings Oh yeah, it looks a little lighter actually, right on the application. Same idea as you just want to spread it as much as possible without having to go back. Going back to that original wing instead of the palette and then trying to spread it onto the next wing here. That does look more stone gray for sure. Nice man, nice. And that will help when we go to do the black tone. It's going to help that tone punch much better than having that darker gray. All right, going to let that one dry and go on to number two. I'm not gonna put gray primer on the base after. I'm just gonna leave it nice. Okay, let those two dry. They have just one coat of Stonewall Gray. I feel that's good enough. I really do. You just need to let it dry for a minute or two. We're actually gonna be using the fine detail brush. We're gonna use a wash to accentuate the crevices, make everything pop with a 3D effect, essentially. In this set, it gives you the black wash. Unlike the paints, this is more of an effect, so it's not the same consistency. It just feels like water in a bottle, so really you don't have to open it up and release anything. You just shake the bottle. And a small amount, just letting it drool out a bit, and it looks like black water. So using that detail brush, because we don't want anything on that brush. Touch the wash. Yep, and then I'm putting it on the palette. That's more like it. So what we're trying to do here is gently touch on the lines right here underneath the wing i'm going to show you hopefully and not put too much on giving it there we go that shadow just that much you know you can barely see it truly but that's what you want i think now i'm going to go back for more smear it on my palette a couple times like three times and i'm going to go to the second one here just underneath just tracing it's so easy if you just take your time like that and it's easier to do again with the least amount on because you're not going to coat it there just giving it some dark tone underneath those spines in the wing if that's what you call them really does help man make that pop in here these lines right here if i can just touch that i'm going to try this right now so dabbing the brush in smearing it one two three we're going to try and get right at these thin lines that are stretching his wing out just barely if i can just touch in between those lines with hardly any tone oh, i think i touched the top of it yeah i don't know if i did that well We'll see once that dries. Okay, wetting the brush. Pushing it against the bowl. Getting rid of the excess water and then going back for more black wash. And then dabbing the brush into the wash, black wash, and then smearing onto the palette. His eyes here, just touch. Let's go on the side here. And then the mouth, if I can just get that in inside the mouth and then that little line separating his ear see how his jaw has a muscle and then it sticks out protrudes i want to go along the outside of his jaw if i can gently oh like that i don't want to go along the face see how that face looks like it's two pieces does that make sense i don't know if that's meant to be to me it looks like the way the mini was built but i could be wrong that striation separating the delt that's just going to accentuate that by touching barely man that's amazing that's what I want for everything, ideally. In here, where his leg, his calves are touching. In here, see what I'm saying? It's like all of the indented spots. You're just making them pop. You know, I'm just tracing those lines with what feels like nothing on my brush, but no, nope, it's showing. You can see that, I hope. The side of the quad. Repeatedly going over it. Again, nothing on my brush still, but it doesn't make the solid black line. It just looks so faint. So good. Oh, that's awesome for me. And then around his neck. In here in this wing, down, running along the inside, I'm just going over it. Again, my, my brush feels dry, but I'm doing it just in the crevice. Okay, I'm going to add a bit more. Wetting the brush, getting rid of the excess water, and back into the black wash, swirl it around, and then streak your palette like four or five times one two three four five right on the kneecap there it goes in a bit inside here between the arm and the, the leg 
Same here between the arm and the leg, separating the two. Wow, I, I love the washes so much. Oh, that is cool. So glad that the prismatic paints came with them in their cases. Wetting the brush, going in, swirling around, streaking that plate seven times, I'm gonna say, because it seems to be good for me. See that middle spine? Right there, down the middle. Oh, let's go. Yes, I, with nothing on the brush, it just works so well. In between the wing and the body, right here, where this wing, you can see what I'm saying, I hope now. It's all of those spots where it goes indented, but try and trace so lightly. Man, that makes that punch so cool. Oh, man, that is just awesome. All right, going back for a bit more black. The backs of the wings, same what we did on the front, just tracing gently. The lighter, the better. See those lines right here? You can catch those just ever so lightly, like that back for more yeah, streaking like seven to ten times better to have nothing on there and having to go back instead of overloading it these lines right in here same idea on this side raising that down here the line here there's a couple striations if you can touch them gently on the quads right here if you can see that it's a line you can just trace that one line and the shin you'll see it on your mini it's probably hard to see on mine here all right, see in the butt and where the tail joins to the butt cheeks here? The tail, the outer part of it. To accentuate the cheeks, dabbing it back into the black wash. Again, about seven or more times. All right, see where I'm just going along the base of the tail here, like a bracket. Let's go with the feet. So I'm just trying to trace in between the toes. It's like little dots. Just in between, that's it, not on top. Nice. Okay, same thing, we're gonna do this to the next guy. <laughs> Wet that brush, using the black wash, it's still on the palette. Don't forget, get rid of most of the bit on your brush. On the outer edge here, trying to trace. Oh, I'm shaky there. On this one now too. It's even these lines here on the inner part of the wing, you can touch that as well. Just a couple times here in the indents. If you do it too much everywhere, you might lose that effect. Back to the black wash, getting rid of most of it. Six, seven times off the brush. Now I'm gonna do the side of his arm here, the striation, the shoulder, then going around the bicep, around the forearm, the chest area. I don't know if I did it to the other guy. I will now, underneath the pecs. Yeah, wicked. I'm gonna try the other side of the arms here. Same idea, the mouth. Now trying his eyes, seeing if I can get anything there. I still haven't gone for more and yet, it's catching, that's awesome. There, and the horns, gonna do that together. Underneath, trying to go around the spine, edges. Underneath that crevice where he's squatting. I want it to be only in the crevices, man, truly. Wow, I'm gonna try and get in there like a needle. Oh, that's a tricky angle. Now I'm gonna go horizontal, you know, just getting those crevices, man. I think like that. Now that top part of the ab, I got the midsection, just not very top, nice and slow. Going back for more, black wash on the palette. All of those subtle lines in there, ready? I'm looking through the camera here, just to see if anything happens, does it add any? tone i'm just now smudging it just touching i mean grazing i do not even want to add more than that yeah man it just it, you're adding the shadows essentially underneath his horns just underneath the eyes you haven't yet touching just touching and then touching the inner mouth and the neck around it, just grazing. Are we done already, really? So on this guy, the inner part of that wing, I don't see any detail with my shadowing like I did with this guy. I do like how that's more pronounced. This one's a little too fine, but it does work. You can see it more on the camera than in what's in front of me. Makes those wings punch, man. Let's say you got so much black all over his face and it looks like a big blob. 
you would just get the dry brush from one of the starter sets. The Army Painter, for instance, had one. It looks like this, and at the tip, it has a lot more bristles and it's thicker. You do not wet the brush, you just put it in paint. So back to Stonewall Gray for the dry brush technique. Give it a good shake. Not wetting at first. Using a rag and getting it off of your brush altogether just by constantly going left and right onto that rag until there's hardly anything. And then you're gonna stroke in one direction, just a bit lighter. Yeah, see it lightened up his arm. Let's go his face a bit. Instantly. That's how quick. It just completely corrected the mistake. See the top part of the wing here? I haven't put any more on my brush. I'm just gonna do that from down to up to get into that crevice. There, I got rid of almost all of that black wash. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Really happy. Just to show you guys, you know, doesn't take much effort, much time. So yes, these two guys will be in one of the adventures I'm having very soon in the Candlekeep Mysteries I had mentioned earlier. The Book of the Raven. Looking forward to it. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see the other minis painted because I'm going to do it. I got to get her done. Awesome. Yep, totally happy with that, guys. All right, so if you like what I've done today, please click that like button. And if you want to see more of this content, please subscribe to my channel. And for all of you that have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. I super appreciate it. Until the next one.